The echo effect can be found under the time category, and when we apply it to our layer, it's going to generate duplicates of that layer offset in time. So I went ahead and added some position keyframes on my logo so that it just juts around the screen like this, and we can see that duplicate trailing behind. Now it's also blending it with the original layer. So let's take a look at the controls. Right down at the bottom is the echo operator and it's set to add. So that's why this is blending the echo with the original using that add blend mode. We can change this to maximum where it's going to prioritize the brightest pixels or minimum where it'll prioritize the darker pixels, screen, composite in back or composited in front. And then finally we have blend which is similar to both screen and add. It's just subtly different. If I switch to add, you can see that it's basically the same, but you can play around with that to see if it's something that you like. Now let's look at the actual parameters that control these echoes. Number of echoes is set to one, so we're only getting one duplicate trailing behind. If I turn this off and back on, we can see that. But I could increase this number to however many I want. So now we're getting many more trailing behind. Next, we have the echo time, which is how offset each one of these duplicates is. So it's measured in seconds, which is a little confusing, but if I increase or decrease this number, we're gonna get some craziness just because it is measured in seconds, so it's pretty sensitive. But if you hold down the control key, then it will slow down how quickly this number changes as you click and drag. So I can kind of be more precise with it that way. I'll undo so it's back to its default for now. And then we have starting intensity and decay. So the starting intensity is basically just the opacity overall, but it's applied to every single instance. So these are blending with those opacities. It's not just an overall layer opacity. I'll reset that back to one. And then we have decay, which is set to a default of one, but if I turn it down, each duplicate of my layer is incrementally more transparent so that it's actually fading out. So those are all the parameters, but what are some things that we can do to make Echo pretty useful? Well, one use is turning it into basically an onion skin view of your animation. So I'm gonna turn my number of echoes down to three and turn the decay up just a little bit and then change the echo operator to composite in front so that the echoes are behind that original logo. Now in this instance, I'm working at 30 frames per second and the echo time is defaulted to what one frame is measured in seconds, which is 0.0333. But what if you're working at 24 frames per second? Well, let's actually just change the composition settings to 24 frames per second and then click OK. And now if I advance forward and backward one frame, you see that the duplicate frames trailing behind are not locked into that frame rate of 24 frames per second because the echo effect is basing it on a 30 frames per second comp for one frame. So I could say one second divided by 24 to get the value of 24 frames per second, but that shifts it forward in time because we need to go in a negative value. That is another thing you can do with the echo effect, which is put the echo forward in time. Since After Effects knows what's happening further along in the timeline, it can actually project your echoes forward. But to fix that, I would just put a minus sign before that value, and now, if I step forward and backward, it's locked into that 24 frames per second. So that's how you can quickly get that value. And just like that, I now have this onion skin view that allows me to look back in time however many frames I want. I set it to three, but I could turn it down to two or I could increase it up to five. It's totally up to you. And you can really dial in how visible those echoes are with that decay value. Now, one other really fun way of using the echo effect is generating speed smears, which is a technique used in traditional hand-drawn animation to basically simulate motion blur or to imply really fast movement. So I'm gonna reset the effect and we're gonna be using a few expressions to make this a lot easier to work with. First of all, I need a lot of echoes. So I'm just gonna crank that up to say 15 to start and I'm gonna change the echo operator to maximum for now. Now, these echoes are too far spread out. I don't wanna see a trail that's this wide. In fact, I don't even wanna see any gaps between the echoes, so I need to get a much smaller number right here. So I'm gonna hold down Control, click and drag, and that's really just too sensitive, because even right there, that's not enough. I don't wanna be able to see all of these gaps between the duplicates. So what I'm gonna do is double click on Echo Time, which will bring up that property in my timeline, and I'm going to add an expression. So I'll Alt or Option click on that stopwatch and type value divided by 100. And this is effectively going to make that value 100 times more sensitive. So if I click and drag now, and this is without the control key held down, it's much easier to align that. And if I hold down the control key, 
I can be even more precise. So I'm just gonna make something that looks a little bit like that. This is a pretty good smear frame. And because I have the echo operator set to maximum, the brighter parts of my layers of all of the duplicates are being prioritized and stacked on top. If I switch it to minimum, it's gonna reverse it like that. I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So if I play this back, we have these nice smears happening, but I think it's a little too heavy handed. We're seeing it even when it's not moving that fast. And I'd rather just see it when it's moving maybe this fast or faster. So how can we tell After Effects to only show this smear if it's moving that quickly? Well, I'm gonna make a new text layer really quick and I won't even type anything in it. I'll just go ahead and twirl it open and under the source text property, I'm gonna add an expression. Then I'm going to use the expression pick whip to grab my logo layer and then type in dot transform dot position dot speed. And this is now going to tell me the speed of that layer for every single frame in my animation. Now that's giving me a ton of decimal points, just ignore that for now. At the fastest moving part, right about here where I wanna see the smears, it's traveling at a velocity of 2200 pixels per second. So now I know my range basically of speed that I want the smear to appear in, I can implement that into my echo effect. So I'm going to grab the number of echoes, double click on that to bring it up down here. And we're going to add a similar expression to this. So alter option, click on it to add an expression and I'll give myself some more room so we can see this clearly. And I'm going to write an if else expression, which I have a dedicated tutorial to. You can click the card above right now to view that. But what we're going to write is if, and then an open parentheses, and since we're on the logo layer, the actual layer that this effect is applied to, all I have to say is transform.position.speed to target the speed of the layer. And then I'll do a greater than symbol, meaning if the speed is greater than, and then we'll say 2200, because that's roughly what the speed was at that frame. Then I'll go outside the parentheses and do an open curly bracket, drop down, and just type the word value. So what this means so far is if this layer is moving faster than 2200 pixels per second, then we want the number of echoes to be whatever we've typed in right here. But then I need to go down past this closing curly bracket that After Effects generated for me and say else, another open curly bracket, drop down and say zero. And After Effects again made a closing curly bracket for me. So what we're saying is if the speed of this layer is greater than 2200 pixels per second, make this value whatever I've typed in here. Otherwise, if it's not going that fast, then don't have any echoes. We don't wanna see anything but the original logo. So I'll apply that and then just back up one frame where my speed is less than 2200 pixels and my echoes have completely vanished. So if I play this back again, now we're only seeing those smears when it's traveling at a speed of over 2200 pixels. And I think that looks pretty decent. Now we can control the look of these smears really easily just by increasing or decreasing the number of echoes. So if I increase this, my smear will be much longer, or if I decrease it, it will be less. But what if you want to adjust that threshold without having to go into the expression every time and adjusting this 2200 number? Well, we can make this a lot more flexible and easier to edit if we just add a slider. So if I go up to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control, I'll rename this Speed Threshold, and if we edit this effect and change where we had 2200 as a hard coded value and use the expression pick whip to choose the slider value and then apply that expression, now I can use this slider value to control the threshold for that speed cutoff. So if I go to something higher than what it currently is, we're not gonna see any echoes and the smears are only gonna happen on the fastest part of our motion, which is right here. So with a few simple expressions, we can create this completely customizable smear generator using the echo effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.